to the Minister Rania al Marshat. Um, Rania, you have labeled the years 20. 2021 as the years for multilateralism and you also underline that multilateralism uh, is very very important um, for the middle east and north africa when you look at the un no 75th uh, anniversary and as i mentioned earlier on uh, how do we uh, make sure that the international organizations are uh, more adaptive and also are able uh, to uh, be part of finding solutions when uh, there are new challenges that we are faced with. Well, thank you very much, uh, Borgi, and uh, uh, congratulations on the success of the uh, Impact Summit. Uh, I attended it, of course, last year in New York and, and now uh, uh, virtually. And uh, I think uh, what is very different this year, and this leads into uh, multilateralism, is that everybody has been tested. Uh, many of the discussions that we have and have been uh, going on over the past years have really uh, come to the fore in a way that have, has affected citizens, countries, corporates, uh, and each uh, of the themes uh, that were uh, being floated uh, globally, uh, everybody has felt them one way or the other. Uh, the uh, pandemic has shown that no one is in isolation, as you uh, identified earlier. Uh, and therefore, um, everybody uh, has to uh, be part of a collective solution. Um, no country had uh, the silver bullet. Uh, all of us uh, had a chance to learn from each other. Uh, there have been, despite uh, many of the shortcomings and pitfalls in handling certain things uh, in the pandemic, uh, there have also been uh, a few uh, successes. And these successes uh, have given us confidence that some of the issues that we were worried about or worried about engaging in are actually what helped us uh, in this uh, very important uh, test. And when I talk about uh, international cooperation and multilateralism, I want to emphasize uh, what we do here uh, within the ministry and that it pushes uh, both bilateral and multilateral cooperation. And that is what I label economic diplomacy. And economic diplomacy for, for uh, where I sit uh, comes with three principles. The first is uh, having multi-stakeholder platforms, platforms where our partners come, civil society is there, private sector is there. And I'll give you an example in a minute. Uh, the second is uh, when we talk about uh, official development assistance for development, how do we do the mapping between that and the SDGs that all of us want to succeed in fulfilling by 2030? And then the third point has to do with creating a global partnerships narrative, a narrative uh, that empowers us and also uh, engages everyone around the importance uh, of what we can do in a multilateral framework. And let me give an example of uh, successful multilateral platforms. I was in Luxor uh, over the last weekend and there we, in celebration of the 75th uh, anniversary for the UN, and I was uh, in a village called al Baghdadi village. It's a program that we have, Ministry of International Cooperation, Ministry of Agriculture, and the World Food Program, uh, where we, there's a circular economy for uh, small farmers. They have been able to uh, consolidate land, use uh, water effectively, create uh, solar panels, so move from, uh, uh, from uh, diesel to solar uh, energy. This has been implemented in 60 villages. And now, because uh, of the importance of food security agriculture, we're going to be scaling up to 500. So these are very important examples of where uh, a multilateral institution with uh, 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 civil society, which is on the ground, can actually create a real effective outcomes. And then this was provided as also example for South-South cooperation going forward. So these are, um, I feel that uh, uh, the, the protection gap that exists, the investment gap that exists, uh, the digital gap that exists, create opportunities for us, as Professor Schwab has labeled it, uh, the great reset. It's a reset for many things. So now we have, I believe, over the past few months, uh, and uh, a very uh, important uh, learning by doing mechanism. We have seen it uh, in action. We have seen the importance of pushing forward an agenda where all of us are sitting together and very quickly trying to come up with solutions. We've been pushed to innovate. We've been pushed uh, to be agile. And I believe 
uh, and I was part of a, a session on uh, the risk reset, uh, that really having that uh, integrated uh, within uh, the uh, functions of a government or the functions of a corporate are definitely inevitable. Shukran, Minister, thank you for that. And um, as you referred to, uh, Professor Klaus Schwab has also written a book, uh, The Great Reset, that also will be the theme for our annual meeting uh, that uh, we have moved physically um, uh, to uh, spring uh, next uh, year. Uh, before uh, the pandemic, we also saw uh, inequalities in the world, uh, growing inequalities. Uh, in the developed world, but also partly in the developing world. Uh, you referred, Minister, to the SDGs. Um, if we don't get it right, we can maybe see hundreds of millions of people uh, moving into extreme poverty this year. So we're even further away from reaching the overall uh, goal of the SDGs, um, eradicating all extreme poverty by uh, 20. 30. So how do you address inequalities in your country and what is um, your expectation now uh, in the post-COVID world? Because we, I think we're all worried that we will see growing inequalities now, and especially in emerging economies where there's less fiscal space uh, to launch uh, stimulus packages like we see in the US and, and Europe. Uh, thank you, Borgi. And, and I think that uh, one of the themes that uh, we have endorsed with the World Economic Forum and other uh, uh, countries uh, through uh, governments and private and private sector has been the stakeholder capitalism principles. And those uh, are really uh, efforts to try and make sure uh, that we create uh, a more inclusive uh, societies that through uh, better uh, integration of innovation, uh, better capitalization of uh, the technology so that uh, we can push forward with more jobs for the youth. The Middle East has uh, uh, around 60% of its population uh, at a young age, so that requires a uh, very important focus on uh, equipping them with the uh, tools that can uh, provide forward. Also, governance structures are very important. And then the concept of having more regional integration so that everyone's comparative advantage can be put together and then we can scale up. So absolutely, uh, 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 and that's why I started by saying there's a protection gap, meaning that uh, uh, the uh, pushing through the fiscal space uh, to continue uh, with uh, the protection uh, or uh, sort of widening the protection requires a very strong cooperation going forward between all stakeholders, that's government, uh, uh, a private sector and civil society. And um, these uh, all are possible uh, through uh, very clear frameworks uh, that, uh, uh, you know, through governments uh, creating the inducive environment and also encouraging uh, private sector, which I believe has also played a very important role uh, th uh, through this uh, period and also has an important role going forward. So um, the, the, the issues and the challenges are there. However, uh, I believe that uh, the reforms that took place pre-COVID for us in Egypt have helped us through COVID and the reform agenda continues. Um, and this is uh, something that uh, has uh, become uh, very much uh, within the focus and the vision uh, of the government collectively with all actors within uh, society and definitely with our you know, partners in the international community, whether they are the bilateral or multilateral institutions uh, that we very closely work with. And also, uh, Rania, you have Libya next door, so you're living this uh, every day uh, from Egypt side. And then I go to uh, the big country uh, at the end, uh, India. Uh, and, and Minister, I give you the, uh, the opportunity to, uh, to sum up. That makes my job uh, also uh, easier. So, uh, Pekka and then Rania. You know, it's uh, the, 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 the few proxy war examples that you chose. Uh, happen to be all in the Middle East, and uh, it's Egypt's Sorry destiny. <laughs> and uh, and Egypt, it's Egypt's destiny that it's uh, uh, the biggest country in terms of population, and has played pivotal roles uh, over history. And when we look at uh, the first um, uh, priority for Egypt, we host uh, more than five million migrants from Sudan, from uh, uh, Yemen, from Syria. Uh, and they live with us uh, exactly like citizens. And that has been 
uh, one of the key contributions uh, that Egypt has been uh, very keen on providing uh, that environment. Also uh, trying to broker sometimes uh, in, the, in the Libya case, uh, there has been a very important, uh, uh, I wouldn't call them interventions, but uh, diplomatic uh, uh, activities and efforts uh, that have been streamlined with Europe as well to ensure uh, that uh, the, the Libyan uh, people also uh, have the right to choose and move in a direction which is conducive uh, going forward. Uh, maybe two things I want to uh, um, conclude with on the idea of uh, competition. Uh, we are hosting the, uh, the World uh, Cup uh, for, for handball. And on that occasion, I wrote uh, a tweet where I was saying that multilateralism in its essence is just like sports. There's competition, but there's also complementarity. So, so this, is a, this, is the, this is really a theme that has shown and come to the forefront during the pandemic. And we need to capitalize on that because certain things have given us, uh, and when I call us, I'm talking about a generation that looks forward and looks at creating consensus rather than conflict. So there is a very big opportunity going forward that I see and I feel. Uh, the second is uh, you need to mobilize people around that opportunity. And that's why in our global partnerships narrative that we do, uh, with all our multilateral and bilateral uh, friends uh, and institutions around the world, we say people at the core, projects in action and purpose uh, as the driver. And these really go in line with the uh, ESG principles, which are planet, prosperity, people, and governance. So I think that we just need to keep on pushing uh, the agenda. We need to have uh, leaders who believe in it, showcase it, and there's, I believe, many important good examples to show so that successes can be scaled.